Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy. Welcome to episode 15 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this video, we'll take a look at Strip Silence, a cool little editing feature in Logic. What Strip Silence does is it allows us to remove silence or remove a low volume material in between waveforms. This is especially helpful when you're working with live drums like I have here because you can remove the bleed from other uh, drums in one particular microphone. So for example, up here I have a kick drum and it's picking up mostly the kick drum but also all of the other drums that were being played at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to isolate each kick hit with strip silence to get, by getting rid of some of the material in between the kick hits. So if we decide to enhance the kick drum later with, uh, you know, compression or EQ, um, we'll only be affecting the kick drum, not everything else that bled into the track. So let's listen to what we've got going on here. All right, that sounds pretty good uh, without any editing, and I don't want you to think that strip silence is something you have to do when you're editing drums, but it'll help us to isolate this kick drum a little better. So let's listen to the kick drum by itself. All right, that sounds pretty good, but uh, as I said before, you can hear the bleed from the other drums into the track. And so if we wanted to enhance the kick drum later with compression or EQ or something, um, not only would we be uh, enhancing the kick, we'd also be enhancing all of the bleed behind the kick. So we're going to use strip silence to get rid of all of that. I should also mention that this can be used on things other than drums. Uh, so for instance, maybe you've got a kind of a chucky, upbeat uh, guitar chord progression or something like that, and you want to get rid of some of the silence between the chords. You can also use it on vocals to get rid of uh, pauses in between uh, speaking. So the way you turn on strip silence is you click on the region you want to apply it to, and then hit Control X, and you'll pull up the uh, strip silence window. So each of these little blue boxes here is going to essentially be a new slice, a new slice of the original region. And so it's omitted some material like this here, and then you can see that each kick drum has its own little clip or little slice that it's going to be uh, converted to when we apply this. Now, it looks like it's worked perfect, like it's just worked right out of the box and we didn't have to do anything to it, but in fact, it actually saved my last setting I just used before I made this video to test it. So uh, you'll actually have to go in and tweak these settings, otherwise things like this or like the snare drum here will actually end up having a slice rather than being omitted. So each of these slices up here can be customized, lengthened or shortened um, based on the settings down here. We have four settings, we have threshold, minimum time to accept as silence, pre-attack time, and post-release time. So the threshold is the main parameter that adjusts this. Uh, essentially, threshold adjusts the sensitivity of the strip silence. As you pull it down, you'll see more and more slices show up, and even some of them will start to merge together. And as you pull it up, you'll see less and less uh, slices. So only the loudest material at higher thresholds will come through as a slice. And softer material, like my snare drums, uh, will not. So at 31 here, you can see still one of the snare drums has come through as its own slice, which we don't want. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull the threshold up until it goes away. So at 37, it looks like all of the uh, snare drums are no longer given a slice. All right, the next uh, parameter is the minimum time to accept as silence. And what this does is it determines the minimum length of each uh, clip or of each slice. So when you pull this up, you'll see that your slices will start to merge together in larger uh, groups. And as you pull it down, you can have even smaller uh, slices. I don't want my slices to be too long because I don't want them to merge together. But I also don't want them to be too short because I don't want to lose the tone of the kick drum. So what I'm going to do is double click and I'm going to type in 0.03 seconds. And that uh, fits just about right. The next parameter is the pre-attack time. And because strip silence works um, in some ways by uh, transient detection, 
it this allows us to start each slice a little bit before the transient if you pull this all the way down to zero the transient and the waveform can get cut off and it can cut off the attack of the note so i'm going to type in 0.01 seconds to give each slice a little bit of room to breathe i'll still have a nice punchy kick but the slice will just start a little bit before the transient the last parameter is the post release time and this is essentially how long each slice is going to be. So as I pull this all the way down, I'll have tiny little slices. Uh, that's not gonna. That's not really gonna work for us. And if I pull it up, I'll have longer slices. And you'll notice that with this parameter, unlike the uh, minimum time and threshold parameters, it will not merge the slices together. So let's try to find a happy medium for uh, these slices to be not too long, not too short. Yeah, about right there. Let's put it at 0 0.1210 seconds. And then the last little option here is search zero crossing. You want to make sure to keep that on because what it does is it makes sure that the beginning and end of each slice starts at a zero crossing in the waveform. So there's no need to add little fade ins or fade outs uh, to avoid clicks and pops uh, in the signal. So just make sure to keep that on. On the right side of the window, it'll actually show you how many uh, regions this is going to be. So it says 33 regions. And then we just hit OK to process this. And there we go. We've got all of our little slices here. So now that we've got that done, let's uh, take a listen to our kick drum here. And let's see how isolated it sounds. All right, so obviously we're still hearing some of the other instruments in the in the little kick slices, and that's to be expected. There's there's no way to completely remove the kick drum from the rest of the recording, um, especially on notes where the kick drum and say the hi hat or the kick drum and the crash cymbal were hit at the same time. So the the goal here is not to do that though. The goal here is just to isolate what's in between. So when we try to mix this later, it can be more isolated uh, for compression and EQ purposes. Uh, one thing I do like to do um, to kind of make this sound a little less uh, a little less disjunct is to click on the track header and it'll select all of the regions in the track. Go to your region parameters in your inspector and then find your fade out option that we talked about in a uh, previous video and just add a quick fade out to all of those little slices. And what this does is it just makes it sound a little less disjunct. So let's hear what this sounds like with the fades and the other drums brought back in. So obviously there's no night and day difference between the old version and the new version. We just have a little bit more isolation in the kick drum now so that when we decide to mix this later, uh, we can keep it uh, more isolated. And this can be used on other drums too. You can try it on the snare, you can try it on the toms. I usually try to keep it off of the snare because it tends to ruin the tone of the snare drum. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks again for watching.